I, I, you know, I had a good arm, loose arm, and I just, as I get a little taller and bigger, wider, I get some power. Well, what if you don't have a loose arm? What if you have a bad arm? In fact, what does a live arm even mean? And what if you're kind of short, like 5'8"? Is it time to choose another sport? What's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points Tennis. And in the next three videos, we're going to be focused on the serve. Now, it's the most common stroke that I get asked about. And one of the reasons being it's the most complicated. They're the most moving parts on the serve compared to any other stroke, so there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Now, in theory, there's no excuse for you to not to have a good serve because you can come out here and practice at your own leisure at any, any point in time. But look, I've been there, look, I've been there, guys, hitting thousands of serves and only getting just marginally better because, of course, just like anything, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be going around in circles and circles and circles. So a little bit of backstory for you guys. You know, when I was young, I didn't really have much experience or practice throwing balls or really throwing much. So I never developed a natural throwing motion. Obviously, the serve mimics the throwing motion. So you see, actually, a lot of people who do have a natural throwing motion, they can learn pretty good serve technique just by feel. For me, it was the opposite. It's clunky, mechanical, all right? I, I, I've had every problem imaginable on the serve, anxiety, emotional breakdowns even. And so what we're going to show you today is how to execute step by step, right? Where if you do the right things, you can manufacture a pretty good serve, okay? Even if your overhead motion and throwing motion isn't very natural. All right, so before we begin, please hit that like and subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. As usual, thanks so much for supporting. And what I'm going to do is even more importantly, follow my Instagram 15 points of tennis, no underscore. The link is right down below in the description. And for the first handful of people who submit a clip, so just direct message me a clip of your serve. What I'm going to do is give you personalized feedback and repost your serve back in my Instagram with personalized feedback based on the system and frameworks that we're going to discuss. Again, no pun intended. It's first come, first serve, guys. <laughs> All right, so please go ahead and do that you know, when you can. Now to further preface this video, Today, we're going to focus on and talk about the loading and uncoiling mechanics on the serve. That's very different from timing, your contact point, rhythm. Those are very important too, and that deserves its own separate video. Okay, but today we're talking about that getting that perfect trophy pose, okay, and everything loaded properly. Now, there shouldn't be a whole lot of mystery in the serve, guys, because number one, we have great serves of the past to model. Number two, thanks to sports like baseball which they've literally mastered the throwing overhead motion. Everything we talk about should be universal principles that can be applied across all of human body mechanics and across all sports. So if you can't find the universal principles across all sports, if it doesn't work across all sports, I'm just going to say straight up, it's wrong. All right, so that and what you also see is my serve. Now, last thing I'm going to mention before we get into the juicy part of the video, my serve is by no means a perfect serve. Now it's gotten astronomically better because I've literally systematically went through each of the checkpoints, implemented them in a systematic way. And that's how I want you to be thinking about these next few videos, okay? Because if you're doing all the right things in terms of technique, really my serve should be the worst case scenario. So without further ado, all right, let's rock into it. Now when we talk about the serve, just like any stroke, the kinetic chain, right? We're talking about the three joints, your shoulder, elbow, and wrist. These are the levers that are going to coil. And obviously when I uncoil, I'm releasing all that energy into the ball. I'm going to culminate that right at contact at the tip, okay, at the tip of my racket and focus all that energy into the ball. Obviously, I know I always say this, shoulder, elbow, wrist, these are joints. Forearm controls the wrist, which is going to be that pronation hair. We're going to talk about pronation maybe another time, all right? Obviously, tricep controls this, the elbow right here, right, etc. So, obviously, understand muscles, joints, right? That's how it all works in a system. But the biggest one for any throwing or overhead motion is a, is a shoulder because it initiates the whole upper body kinetics. So, let's really focus to start on getting the shoulder coiled and loaded. Now, how are we going to do this? Any coach would tell you, 
first and foremost, you want to get the elbow, as I hit this trophy pose, you want to get this elbow up and out of the body. So what does this do? This engages my shoulder. And why is that, all right? If you ever went to the gym and did shoulder raises, right, for these deltoids, it's disengaged shoulder, engaged shoulder, right? Now there's a little bit of tension in my shoulder once I lift that, get that el elbow up to my body. Disengaged, engaged. So you want to get this engaged, all right? Now my shoulder is engaged. That's the first step. The second step, all right, that I see for more intermediate to advanced players who aren't getting the shoulder right, is the elbow shouldn't just come up, it should also go back. And here's what I mean, okay? I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna break this down step by step. But when I'm talking about back, you should almost feel like you're, uh, you're elbowing someone behind you. Because the full range of motion for the shoulder is what I'm gonna do right now is kinda of do this little chicken arm by tucking my elbow in so I can isolate the shoulder. I'm gonna go back, up, and over. So watch carefully, back, up, and over. And so you can do this, again, if you kind of have a stiff shoulder and need to warm up, or if you just want to isolate the shoulder, you're not doing this correctly, you're not getting the full range of motion on your shoulder. But this right here is a full range of motion. If I, were, if I, weren't, if I didn't go back and just went kind of to the side and up, up and over, this is a much smaller circle. And obviously when you see, if you like watch Sampras' server, and we're going to break this down, Sampras, again, he's so strong and so flexible with that upper body. You see his elbow getting back, right, right here. And, and this is that range of motion. Again, you see that elbow back, up, and over, and it's going to lead into the next part of the serve. Now, I've seen good players serve with literally the elbow here. I've even seen good players serve with their elbow here. I think there's a pro player who actually literally hit a serve like this. But if you're hitting a serve like this, you're really you're not using this third lever. You're only really firing with these with the elbow and wrist. So it's going to be an abbreviated kinetic chain at best, right? You wouldn't if I were to throw a ball really far. I wouldn't throw from here, right? I'd get this full coil back here. Get this ball up to my ear. You see that now my shoulder is really loaded, like a baseball pitcher. That you want this elbow back, right? So I know I stress that enough, but I stress it a lot because it is very important. So looking at a pro baseball player, the throwing motion, look at how coiled, and this is, in my mind, more of an extreme version of that. But I just want to show you to really make you hyper aware to it, because this element has to be there on your serve. So what I'm going to demo next is the half ass shoulder load, where I get, yes, the elbow is out of my body, but it's not back. And so I'm going to call this just an elbow wrist serve using two, only two of the three levers. And look, I can hit it pretty hard, right? Especially if I hit the sweet spot, this isn't bad. But again, it's not optimal. Now I'm gonna demo me getting the shoulder back with the full upper body coil. And look at the difference in power. There's really no comparison using three levers compared to two. And according to that analysis, and we'll continue to look at different elements of San Francisco's serve, but his serve is looking pretty good. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about once, once you're able to get this full sh range of motion with the shoulder, and guys, one thing I like to do to, to get into this coil position is to think about it like an archer loading a bow and arrow. Meaning, like imagine you're, you're stretching back that bow and arrow and, and look at this, right? Obviously, I wouldn't keep this elbow in here or to the side. I'd really get, get that thing pulled back here, right? Obviously, for a serve, we're not shooting it horizontally. We're stretching that bow and arrow to the sky. But see, when you, I think when you think about it like that, it's, it's very easy to get the shoulder loaded down, up, and back, right? You see this left arm point to the sky, so I get that length across the chest, okay? But the next piece, okay, once you can hit that position properly is to get, is, is elbow, right? Shoulder, elbow, wrist. So once the shoulder comes up and, up and around, you're, what we call this is, um, you call it like a flip that occurs. So right now, in this trophy pose, you see the tip of the racket pointing to the sky and the elbow pointing kind of down back to the ground diagonally that way. But as I push and thrust with my legs, you, this flip, 
and I come around, this flip occurs. So as I rotate, now my elbow is pointing to the sky, the tip of the racket is pointing to the ground. And this ensures, see when I get this bend at the elbow, obviously, okay, I know guys, bear with me, these first two parts of the serve are more rudimentary, so I know the, you know, for advanced players, you know, but we gotta cover this. Obviously the elbow has to bend in order for it to extend, right? So I need to get to this point at some point. I know people call, some coaches call it like back scratch position, position etc. Doesn't matter what you want to use. But if you want to be able to use this lever to go up with your, that tricep, you got to get here. Now, I see this more for, um, for players just learning the serve. I call them water polo serves. Okay? If I were, like you see water polo players throw like this and don't bend their elbow because they have to keep the ball, the ball above the water. But if I'm going to throw, I'm, even if I have a good range of motion with my shoulder and even good pronation, this is a disconnected kinetic chain. If I'm throwing like this, uh, you're not going to get much power, uh, right? Because you got to get that bend with the elbow here. You got to get this flip for it to extend. And I know some players who, well, the water polo serve is the first kind of big mistake I see. The second thing is some players with an excessive lag with this racket who are trying to rush their serve and get it around. Again, watch this. If I'm here and I don't, if I don't get to this point, if I'm here, you see this is kind of a half-ass load. It's, it's, I'm not getting the full range of motion with my elbow. So again, when you get this coil, see these three bends? Bend, 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 right? Loaded, 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 which allows me to uncoil, uncoil, uncoil. I don't want to misrepresent water polo players here because the ones that get really far out of the water can get that full elbow coil, but you kind of get what I mean if you have to throw the ball above the water. Uh, this demo, I'm not going to get my elbow fully bent. I don't get that full flip to occur. And you can see, I call it the half-ass kind of elbow bend. And this is, if you call it a shoulder-based serve, where I'm guiding the ball in, and it feels stable, but because there's no elbow, remember, racket head speed is in the, t in the tip. And so I need to fire that elbow wrist to get racket head speed, instead of just guide the ball in. Andy Roddick had one of the most incredible serves ever. Uh, you see him hit that position really well, and he gets so much racket head speed. Again, those last two, elbow and wrist, and it happens so fast. And guys, one of the common themes that you're going to notice on this video of why I tell you you need to get this full range of motion back up and around, and on the elbow, whether you want to call it the back scratch position, to get this flip and this elbow fully bent in order to extend, is because obviously on the serve, you're tossing the ball so you're able to get a full range of motion and wind up big. Because obviously like on a ground stroke, if the ball's coming fast, you might have to abbreviate your stroke and you're using the pace. But on the serve, you don't get any brownie points for shorting your motion, right? I can technically use shoulder elbow wrists and, and go like that, right? But that's not going to really give you a great serve. Obviously you see Sampras, the reason why Sampras gets in, into a full loaded position here, right, with this full coil, is because you want to use that full coil to create momentum and range of motion to build up to that contact point, right, to get all that energy into the contact point. If you can't time that contact point because you're using more range of motion, well then that's an issue with timing, that's a different issue. All right, now Last thing I want to say before we kind of get off on this shoulder elbow wrist thing, okay, if, if you're having a lot of trouble, uh, or if your serve is just a master, I mean, either one of those two things, just really practice your throwing motion. Get that ball up to your ear. Make sure you, you can throw and, and, hit, and hit this really coiled leverage position. Get this left arm out so you get the, the extension here, and just throw, 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 throw at targets. Obviously, if you're throwing and throwing, just put, then you just put the racket in your, in your hand, and then you have a good upper body throwing motion, okay? I want to show you some old footage of when I was serving and I was unable to get the elbow back. See how the elbow is to the side, not getting the full coil? And my serve was weak, I was struggling, and it was getting pummeled. Especially if I didn't place my serve well, I was starting every point on the defensive, and it was just tough to win points on my serve. And a little over a year ago, around this time, I tweaked my shoulder 
I was experiencing some shoulder tightness as well. I don't know if that contributed to a lack of me not being able to do this, even though I understood the concept. Look at a first serve. It was, again, not powerful enough to really even cause damage and give me advantage in the point. And this was about the hardest I could hit a first serve, which is pretty pathetic compared to what I can do now, where you can see my shoulder being uh, much more flexible and fluid. And so when you go out there and practice, keep the technique in mind, but also keep in mind your upper body strengthening and flexibility. That might be a limiting factor. So an actual world-class serve, Rayonich, everything we're talking about, guys, all the good serves, even though they might differ in timing and rhythm, they're all essentially the same in terms of mechanics. The next thing I want to go to and these are the more nuanced points, guys, what we're going to finish with here. Number one is, I've talked about this before, but as you serve, it's very important that you keep the traps down. Now, I'm going to have you come around this side. And, and what do I mean by that? So your, tra your trap muscles are these right here, okay, that lift your shoulders up and down. So I can raise my shoulders, like if I'm doing like shoulder raises, these are my shoulders but these are my traps. You see right here, traps up, traps down, traps up, traps down. What's very important is to keep, as you, rate, as you lift your arms up, to keep these traps down, right, as you, as you coil. And the question is, why do you want to keep the traps down? Well, once I'm, when my shoulders are down and locked in, I have access to my core strength. And I always use the example of pushing a boulder. If a boulder was rolling down a cliff, I'm trying to hold it up, Right? You see how my shoulders are, are locked in and pressed down and my core, I have access to my core strength. I'm very strong here. I can push that boulder. Once I lift my traps up, I'm going to get knocked over with my boulder because see, I lose access to my core strength. Right? When we talk about your swing and your kinetic chain, it's always got to stay connected. Right? right? See that core engagement through the entire stroke. So, first of all, when we get into this balanced position, right? See how, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very subtle, especially when I tilt between this and this, this and this. Sometimes with people with exaggerated tosses, you see this exaggerated toss, when I'm tossing it really high, and this trap coming up, look at my core. I, I'm disengaging my core. It's very tough with a disengaged core to balance because I've got to hit my center of balance and hold it right here, right? If, I, if I'm tossing up like this and exaggerating my toss, trying to get a too high of a toss, that core strength goes right out, right out the window. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now the hitting arm, and I had an issue with this at one point, okay, keeping this trap down. Obviously you wanna keep it connected and strong, okay, all the way up to contact. What people try to do is on their contact, because I know coaches will sometimes say, you know, reach as high as you can, reach up, reach up. And that's good at a very low level. But think about this. All right, I don't want to hit, I don't want to make contact with the ball at the highest point. I want to make contact with the ball at the highest point that I am strong. So if I serve right here, now watch my core at contact. Okay, watch my body at contact. If I serve here, see how my trap is down? <clears throat> see, see my core engaged? I'm strong right here. Okay, but if I try to get that extra inch of extension, okay, and try to go, like this, disengage, I'm weak here. I mean, if, if, if you've ever seen someone like tip a ball in basketball to get, get a rebound and tip it to, or like a tip off in basketball, uh, you're not very strong at, the, at, the high, at your actual highest point. So I don't want to be at my highest point. I want to be, again, with this trap down, the shoulder is up. Again, it takes some shoulder flexibility, but uh, here, right? That's where, that's where I want to be making contact. Because I, I want to, again, put, channel all that force into the ball and be in a position to strength that contact. So throughout your entire serve, again, keep those traps down. And it's going to actually feel strange to you, okay, once you get this, it's going to feel strange to you if your core is engaged, okay, and, and your serve is, doesn't feel stabilized. This one is always hard to identify. And I want to look at some old footage where I'm pretty sure that this was happening, both on the tossing and hitting arm at contact, where... He's trying to reach up a little too high, and you see the technique isn't bad, but it's a little, it's not stable, especially when he hits his trophy pose. 
there's a little bit of destabilization that's occurring through contact and it's so subtle but just again lifting that trap up slightly at contact you lose that core strength now this is a few months later we're trying to shorten the toss to help him naturally keep again that nice tight core and then in theory those those traps down so look at the connectedness and the power he gets and, and how quiet and solid he's able to keep the midsection and to me that looks better and again as coaches we're always looking for i mean i call it connect connectedness and that connectedness you lose sometimes uh, when you're even reaching slightly and and your contact point and that makes a big big difference since then it's been a little bit better the serve is looking a little tighter and more compact but again it's always a work in progress and we shall see let's take another look at our baseball player those traps down but those shoulders raised that again gives him access to his core strength all the way through his release point same exact thing on the serve and we're going to watch pete sampras now it's hard to always tell if that trap comes up on the tossing arm but the hitting arm see how compact he keeps it he is not reaching up and trying to hit it at its highest point but keeping that trap down look at how compact again the follow-through is right there and strong where his core is very stable one thing about Maria's serve, she does so many things well, just I get this feeling as a coach, every now and then, she starts to reach a little too much in the court, just reach for that extra inch, and it throws her a little bit off balance, it seems, and that long follow through, it's not as compact, not quite as stable sometimes. Alright, so, now the last piece we're going to add, again, as you can see, we have went from the upper body, now we're coming down to the midsection. All right. The last part I want to talk about for this midsection is a is a tilt back. All right. In the next video, we're we're going to be covering the legs, the lower body. But when you bend your knees, if I want to keep my center of balance, I I tilt back to counterbalance. So that's obvious. But when we do the tilt back, and I've talked about this and I've covered it prior, but I want to really unpack this even more. When you tilt back. It's important that you're actually tilting back instead of bending back, okay? Because once you bend back, you can really hurt the spine. And so you have to understand, like, your spine, your vertebrae, okay? What can makes, consists of your vertebrae is all these individual discs in your spine that stack on top of each other. Now, technically, your spine isn't straight because there's a natural curve, like, in the, like obviously, like, there's a natural curve, you know, at the bottom of my spine, etc. So it's not necessarily straight, but when it's stacked correctly, it will feel straight because it'll actually allow your body to be relaxed and strong. All right, if I'm if that spine, if, if I start bending my spine like this, then all my other upper body muscles need to counterbalance and they tighten up. Right? Obviously, on your serve, you don't want them to tighten up because then you lose relaxation and you lose speed and power. Okay, you want your spine all those discs in your spine to stack correctly. But what happens is, when you guys are serving, and this is the cause for back issues, okay? When people start arching, especially for kick serves, arching their back like this, those discs are crunching up in their spine, okay? Plus, you're taking all this excess muscle to hold yourself from, to keep yourself from hurting yourself. Okay, so if I, actually if I pull up from here, uh, I'm actually losing power and it's going to be hard to transfer the power from my lower body to my upper body. There goes the kinetic chain. So when we talk about the tilt in the spine, it's very important. See, obviously my head, my, my neck, my head is pointed up because I'm looking at the ball. But see this tilt back right here? This is a trophy pose you want you to tilt back with the, the upper body loaded. This is the tilt back position you want to hit. And so with the spine straight, what this allows you to do is straight, right? It's gonna, again, it's going to feel straight. Again, it's not technically straight. Like when we do the slow-mo cam, it's not technically straight, but it's going to feel straight and it's going to feel very strong. Again, we always talk about position of strength. Okay, as you rotate here, what this allows me to do is, is to rotate on, on a clean axis. When you think about your spine being straight, right? If it's stacked correctly, it's going to rotate on a clean axis. Same with the forehand. When I hit a forehand, I want to uh, rotate on a clean axis. 
Once they start to bend my spine like this, I'm, I can't rotate on that axis anymore. So think about this. I can rotate on an axis if it's straight up right here. If I tilt like this, I can still rotate on a clean axis. You see golf, right? So they hit the driver, it's further away. They hit, hit the pitching wedge, it's closer to their body. Because I'm bent at the hips, I can still rotate on a clean axis, you see. I can still get that rotation. Once I bend my spine, I can't rotate on a clean axis. And instead of rotating for power, I have to, once I start bending my spine, I have to start pulling for power. You see this? Start pulling for power. So that's why the big thing on the, with the spine thing is by tilting back, I can still get that rotation and it feels easy and clean. As opposed to once I start bending my spine, I have to start uh, pulling for power. Right? And, I, and look at, see this, I don't want this chest in my ribs moving around because I'm at the pull for power. So. We're going to look at a few serves starting with the Great Pete Sampras. Notice there's not a whole lot of bend in his spine, but a whole lot of tilt back, right, to get an angle to the ball. I know we're going to, in the next video we're going to talk about what I call the bend and snap concept. I know the head snaps forward at the end of the serve, and there are a few more dynamics going on, but here I want you to look at and notice the clean rotation from the head to the base of the spine. There's a very clean rotation that occurs that's unobstructed and we have the rest of the body rotating around. So Andy Raddick serve, you're going to see Federer serve next. But notice how the head doesn't move around a whole ton. Again, because it's just so heavy. So when we're talking about the tilt back and keeping that clean access, this is a concept here. That's So that sort of recaps everything we talked about, okay? Again, this trophy coral pose, just knock off one thing at a time. Get the shoulder, the elbow, okay, the tilt back, the left arm, right? Just make sure, just go down the checklist and make sure you have everything in place. I think this is pretty good to get you started. Now, remember, in the next video, we're going to be talking about coiling the lower body. And this is where we're going to see the, the serve really come together, right? All the pieces, it does work together. But I do want to say, when we talk about the upper body, the, the muscles and the joints closest to, to the point of contact in the ball are the most important, okay? Because if you don't have a good contact point and, and culminating the power right here, even if you add legs, it's not gonna do quite as much, okay? So before we launch that next video, I don't know whether it's a week or two weeks out, really go hit the courts and get this stuff down, all right? We'll see you on the next one.